The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Hope Housing is championing the great Aussie dream for our everyday heroes, police, nurses, paramedics, teachers and more by reinventing the way they buy homes. Hope's shared equity housing model means your clients can now access the property investment returns they've come to love without the hassle of being a landlord and at the same time enabling affordable home ownership for a deserving frontline worker. It's the win-win Australia needs right now. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I've got this pleasure of speaking with Lionel O'Malley from Purpose Planning today. Lionel, thanks for, for joining me for a chat. No worries, James. Uh, happy to jump in and have a chat. As I said we, before we press record, we've uh, sent a few messages backwards and forwards on, on Instagram and I'm keen to just have a chat with you about business and what you're up to and why don't we make a podcast episode of yeah. it at the same time. So so maybe tell us a bit about Purpose Planning. Let's let, let's start there. What who, who's your business? What is it? Who do you who do you do it for? What what's purpose? Um, plan? Yeah, so likewise, messages are a bit of a fan of James Wrigley, so I like the content that you <laughs> send out, and I'm interested to hear more about you, what you post on a daily. So uh, thanks for sending that out. It takes um, big coherence to actually do that because the social media is a bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> it can be scary, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but me, myself, um, I'm Lionel O'Malley, the founder and principal of uh, Purpose Planning, uh, really new into the piece of business. Um, I've been in business now for the last two years in with Purpose Planning, so um, it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster, but at the same time, um, it's been great and uh, more motivating to get out on my own in my own business. Yeah, good um, on you. About me, I guess, um, I've got a bit of a different background from your traditional financial planner, really. Um, I'm originally from um, Burke, way out west. So, grew up there and moved down to Dubbo and went to schooling there. Yeah. I was more known as a football player rather than a financial planner. So, whenever I go back to Burke now, most people actually don't even know I'm a financial planner. So, I'm trying to promote that back there yeah. now, but I was there. Originally, no, I was playing rugby league. So, I've been in Sydney where I live now. Um, been here for over 10 years now and moved down predominantly just to play rugby league for the Bulldogs. So yeah. that was the start of my journey in Sydney. And then um, the football side of it uh, sort of went two ways. I was either staying semi-professional playing rugby league in the New South Wales Cup for Wentworthville. At the same time, I was concreting um, for six months and then the concreting side of it, I was like, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. So, yeah. um, the guy that I was working for actually looked like a, a worn out leather boot, and he was only 50 years, 52 years old, and he'd wear short shorts, gum boots, and no shirt every day. And yeah. I was like, this is pretty tough. So, I just looked at the university um, degrees around where I was living in Parramatta and found accounting and financial planning. And pretty much, yeah, one thing led into another and I had an internship with a small practice in Castle Hill for about two and a half years and did the admin client service and power planning route. Um, finished a financial planning degree and then essentially I um, was like, I need to get out and actually do advice and see clients. So then I got another, got a job at a larger A&P firm in North Sydney, um, was there for five years and then led me into the route of going down to purpose planning, which is I was, wasn't going to work for a bigger practice for the rest of my career. So yep. I've got, at the time, I had 30 years to work as a career. I was like, Matt, why don't I just do it on my own and make a bit more of a um, a better living for me and my family long term? Yeah. How old were you when you decided to go to university and do the study? How old were you then? Yeah, so I was 21. Yeah, okay. Yep. 21, I um, 
I had a t- contract at the Bulldogs for two years. Um, in that time, I had a, a knee reconstruction. Yeah, cross. Yeah, set of put it on the back burner. But um, yeah, I was twenty one and still playing. So I was playing footy, working part time or full time as a landscaper and um, doing uni at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. I was pretty full on. Yeah, it's interesting the number the people that have that have kind of got into accounting and, and financial advice. A little after school, like you're not you're not talking you know too too long after you would have finished high school, but you know I've had chats with people here and others that I've had on the podcast that have kind of gotten into it uh, a little later, rather than just finishing school, going straight to doing their three year uni degree, and then out the other side you've you know obviously had footy there in in, in between. Yeah. So so a couple of years into into purpose planning, what what is your is it you on your own? You've got some some people with you. What's what's your what's your business look like in terms? Yeah, of- Yeah. So two years stuff? into it. Um- I have an admin or client service manager that works four days a week in the office where I'm working at the moment. Yep. Um, I work out of a chartered accounting practice, so that's um, pretty handy. We work hand in hand with all of our client situations. Um, in our in my business, there's I've got two offshore staff as well, so we've got like a full suite of a service to help before your financial planning areas, and it's when we're trying to make the process pretty quickly and. And informative, but along the way, giving regular communication to clients. Yeah, nice. And and you and you're glad you did the the move onto your own a couple of years ago rather than working in the bigger practice. So you, you yeah yeah yeah. Well, with that? initially it's pretty tough in yeah. the first couple of years. A bit. Um, it's a bit of a roller coaster on emotions as well. So, um, but yeah, no, definitely glad because um, you're obviously when you've got 100 percent of the skin in the game, you're working like around the clock pretty hard and. The harder you work, the more fulfilling and rewarding it will be for you long term. So, um, I like to work pretty hard, yes. <laughs> um, especially in the hours of when when I can work. You know what I mean? Like I've got three young kids as well. Yeah, okay. Um, I help out a fair bit. That sort of makes a fair bit of flexibility from having your own business as well. You can have a day off at the same time. That day off does cost you. So, yep. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I guess you're not, you're not accountable to anyone else other than yourself, aren't you? So you yeah, work exactly. when you want to work, don't work when you want when you don't want to work, but yeah, yeah, yeah exactly you're just right. accountable to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so what have, what have you done in terms of licensing? So have you you know, you've gone on gone on your own. Who you what's your licensing arrangement like? Yeah, so I've um I joined with Spa Financial Group. Oh yeah, okay. Yep. And um they're down in Melbourne. Um yep. good group of yeah, good group of advisors, a younger group as well. So and the responsible manager there, Arthur Callis, is a good guy. Yeah. He really cares about his advisors and the direction where he's taking his business and um, gives a fair bit of flexibility in terms of like how we want to run our own businesses as well. Right. And then just ships in to help out where we are. And um, yeah, with the license as well, we also have like a, a, a quarterly catch-up, advisor catch-up group, which is pretty cool, where about 10 or 12 advisors um, in the region or in the state pretty much catch up. And we all catch up in person as well. None of this Zoom bullshit. <laughs> so we all catch up, um, talk business, um, have lunch together, and then have a beer in the afternoon as well to sort of let the free throwing emotions run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. During the afternoon, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty vital part of our our group as well. I think. Is it? Is that a? Is it a kind of a structured quarterly thing? Is it like an, there's an agenda and, and things to it, or it just kind of go with the flow each each quarter? How does, how do they work? It's it's structured in the sense that we catch up every quarter. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's sort of like a must. Um, but no, it's not really any particular agenda. It's sort of whatever is the flavor of the month at the time. Um, most of the businesses in that group or the advisors are all principals of their own business. They're all one or two man bands. Yeah. And they've been in business for either six months or five years. So we're all sort of learning along that journey together, owning a business, running a business, running and doing advice for clients and managing clients and how we're doing advice pretty much. So it's like an open share and forum to like just share what you're doing in your business. And if it's doing, and if you're doing well at it, obviously share it and tell people your tips and tricks. Because there's so many clients in Australia to, to help. So yeah. we're not really competing with each other. We're trying to help each other, really. Help each other, support each other to grow. Yeah, yeah. And I would imagine, you know, being 
and being in, in, in a small business, you got yeah, this is four days a week, s- some support staff, and, and everyone else that's there, you know, one or two man businesses as well. Uh, having that ability to come together is going to be pretty good. You, you know, you, you're not going to have someone you know, on a day to day basis to bounce ideas off quite so much, but bringing it together quarterly has got to help a lot. All the thought, yeah, quarterly, and at the same time, we're all small business owners in our own business, and if you're not doing something like that, you're pretty much becoming very um, like independent on your own and you're seg- you're segregated from the outside world if yeah, you're speaking to other advisors as well. So it becomes quite lonely as well when you're on your own practice, yeah. when you're a one man band. So that is sort of the reason for that meeting is just to form better relationships with your peers um, and really learn and try and elevate your game as a, an advisor and as a business owner as well because at the end of the day, if you can do that, your business practice, your your, your advice is going to get better. Your business is going to um, obviously earn more revenue for you and your family. So it's like a win-win-win yeah. essentially. Yeah. So who are you who are you working with? Like I had a, had a look at your website earlier and, and, you, and you talk about different segments or whatever you want to call it, different types of clients at different different life stages. But but what, what's the type, kind of dem, typical demographic and, and location of, of the clients that you're working with? Yeah, so typical clients for most of our, well, the majority of our clients, probably 70% of them are pretty much pre-retirees and retirees. Yep. So um, the small business owners or pay-as-you-go um, couples and stuff like that that are employed closer to the near of retirement or they're actually in retirement now. And we're pretty much adding a fair bit of value there by making sure all their structures are set up effectively, reducing their tax and all the other um, additional pieces that an advisor would add value with. They're the area they're, that's our sort of our sweet spot because we I've done that quite a bit and, yep. and um, I'm more of a, a tea and coffee guy. So <laughs> happy to go and have a tea and a coffee with my clients and sit down and chit chat about their life. I do a fair bit of Majority of our meetings, like when the reviews start ticking around, are more um, personal and and lifestyle and and like history sort of type discussions rather than talking about finance. Finance covers about twenty five percent, or not well, even that, twenty percent of our conversation. Yeah, the rest of it's made up of like yeah, their lifestyle, what they're doing. In their how long a how long's a typical review meeting go for you? How how long do would they would they last for? Yeah, typical review meeting. We do it in two parts. Um, the first part is just pretty much data capture, just capturing their data, doing a, a quick half an hour or, or a 20 minute phone call just to capture the data and update their details with our, our app that we use to yep. just see where we call that our looking back meeting. And now, now, our second meeting is called our looking forward meeting where we're going through um, all of their projections and advice documents and stuff like that and ongoing fees and stuff like that. But a typical review meeting, the looking look, uh, looking forward meetings, roughly around 60 minutes okay. or 90 minutes or thereabouts. Um, probably three quarters of that is just chit-chat. Yep. And how do you do that? So that two meeting process, you know, one's a bit of a data capture, just refreshing to make sure you've got their current yep. details and then you've got this looking forward meeting. Are they done in quick succession? Like how did- how does that work? Yeah, it's, it's turned around within two to three or four weeks, to be honest. So the first meeting is just a data capture. It's like a reverse fact find. Send out a form to a client via our app. Yep. They go through the form and update all their details. Most of our information is pretty much up to date already through the Wealth Portal app that we use through My Prosperity. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of like just a pre um how are you going, what's changed, what's new, and what do we need to do as part of our next meeting for our sign-off meeting. Okay. So that's usually it. It takes about half an hour at max, yep. really. Um, and that's our, our obligation to make sure we've done a review within that 12 months as well. And how, so, how are you doing that meeting? Is that on the phone? Are you going to see them? Like, what are you doing? Uh, that? That, one's, that one's all virtual over yep. the phone. Good over the phone or via Zoom. Yep. Um when we're sending out a calendarly link at Siva, they're, only, they're the only two options that they get: phone call or a Zoom meeting. So, gotcha. yeah. and then and then that looking forward meeting. How are you? How are you running that? Like, is that is that in person? Is that virtual yeah, as well? So that, yeah, that's my big. That's probably one of the big things that I sort of um, I don't share with advisors uh, with clients that I, I probably my 
point of difference that I actually like seeing people in person. I hate Zoom meetings. Uh, I'd rather go out and see them, sit down and talk to them about their their lives and um, get to know them. I'm more of a relationship person. So, yeah, all of our, our looking forward meetings are all done in person. Gotcha. All so, done in person, yeah. So, does, so you then, when you're going through that, do you block out periods of time where you'll spend a few days on the road going to see everyone and you knock it out in one go? Like how do you, how do you manage your diary? Yeah, well, well, a lot of our, a lot of my clients are based in Orange, Bathurst, Dubbo, um, Griffith, down on the south coast, um, a couple up in Queensland, out in Burke as well, yep. out west. Yep. So, yeah, we usually just have all of our review meetings, those looking looking back meetings over the phone and then book all of our meetings in the same two or three days when we're going out there. So, we're just sort of staggering it wherever we can put them all together into the one, yeah, one day. You Typically, like a day when I'm going out west is like, I'll drive from Dubbo to Bathurst and I'll have five consecutive meetings for an hour and there's an hour or half an hour between. So, you're just going bang, 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 bang. It's like five cups of teas and coffee. <laughs> Need a toilet break in between and then uh, on to the next one. Yeah, exactly right. And then we sometimes we're going out for lunch with clients as well or taking them out for lunch as yeah. well. It's a difference as well. Like some people are really unexpected that you, if you want to go out and actually build a better relationship, you set aside all the finance side and actually get to know them on a more of a personal level. So taking someone out to lunch or a client out to lunch, um, you really get to open, they really open up to you. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty powerful. And do you do you find that then your your clients are strong referrers into you? Because it seems like you're putting a lot of work into. I, I dare say more than what a lot of other advisors are in in being with them in their you know in their home or whatever. Do, do you find yeah. that they're strong advocates of yours? Yeah, they definitely are. A lot of our a lot of our new clients come from all of our existing yeah, clients fantastic world. So yeah, I've only just started picking up the social media po- showed social media posting recently because. Um, we just want to have a bit more of a presence and I've got um, like a little book that I've created to share with the rest of the online community as well. Yeah, so right. yep. I'm going through that over the next uh, six weeks. Is it? Um, but yeah, like we we don't we don't really get a lot of clients from social media. A lot of it comes from referrals or existing clients mainly. And to see, you mentioned a couple of times there, about this, you mentioned the Wood app, our app. They're updating things here. How are you? Yeah, wh- wh- what are you using? How are you engaging with the clients? In, yeah, in that so space? the app that we've we've taken on board is called My Prosperity. Yep. Um, we cl- we refer to that as our wealth portal. Um, with clients, we're pretty much for new clients, it's really handy because you can send a link to them. They activate and register their own account, and then we've got an automatic pre-populated it's not a full fact line but it's let's we'll call it a wealth snapshot where it captures all of the main pieces of information that you need for advice and they can enter in what they're looking for as well um and that pretty much they do that on their time so it takes me 20 seconds to send an email to register it's actually in their calendar invite yep and then before our first meeting we've pretty much got all the details from them from a financial financial perspective because they've added everything to the app that's for new clients so that's pretty handy it saves probably three or four hours of capturing the data in the first 45 minutes giving it to um, a power planner or me myself putting it into x-plan which is an absolute nightmare um and there's yes saving time with data capture so but for review clients we're integrating all of the information from what we originally had and putting it into my prosperity um, that looking back meeting is them either updating the details themselves or I'm actually jumping in there myself and updating all the details as we go through the questions and yep. see what's going on. And then it can generate a, a Wall Street report pretty much like a fact one as well out of that. Um, so that's pretty handy. But some of the, the older generation where we've got clients in their sort of like 60s, 70s, 80s, and actually I've got a 94-year-old client um, she's obviously not using the app, but uh, all the other ones that have, still have the the ability to use their mobile phone and their devices, they can all use an app. So um, it's a bit of a hurdle to get over at the start. Actually, activating the app is probably the hardest part. The password. Right. Yep. But once they've got it, it's easy. Like, and it's and you're, you're finding that another you know, seventy year olds picking it up, picking it up well. Yeah. 
better than what you thought they're maybe? Out, they're picking out up well because once it's set up and they've got the app on their phone, all they need to do is just click on the app and it shows up their full wealth, their net worth of, of their situation, which is that all their details. And, and at the same time, with my prosperity, we it's you a lot of advisors use it for cash flow advice and um, all that side of things. Where a lot of my clients, I don't give cash flow advice. I'm not yeah. going to tell a seven year old how much money to spend. <laughs> but the data feeds that you get from the bank accounts, we don't use that. We use it for my just a, a net worth situation for them to jump onto their wealth portal account, click on their super account, and tell us what the balance is. That's all they're after, and that's. Pretty much the nuts and bolts of what we use it for. It's for checking on their total wealth. Yep. And also the good thing about it at the moment is we're, we've been using a lot of electronic signature through it and it saves the documents to the to the vault. So you don't have to go looking for it. They know what they've signed. It's in their actual doc vault. And then they can upload all their personal documents that they need to upload as well, like the wheels, driver's license, all that sort of stuff, uploaded into the app. And they can just take a photo with their phone Bang! There we go, straight in. And so, does that does that then push across into X Plan, like that name and date of birth and all of those details goes straight into X Plan? You're not having yeah, to no, double so handle it's it. Yeah, so straight way integration from My Prosperity straight into X Plan. Yeah. So, in a review, you've already got the information in X Plan. When it goes into My Prosperity, it's updated, and then they push it back into X Plan. You just got to make sure you're not doubling up on assets. Yeah, okay. Um, but it's more. Um, accurate into the sense that the all the valuations done through Core Logic for property, um, the Red Book valuations for their cars and oh, yeah, boats, yeah. And all yeah. that sort of trucks and caravans and all that sort of shit. Yes. So it's it's a lot more accurate with what their actual that lock the valuations are, especially if you have the data feeds turned on as well. It shows you all their bank accounts, what they've spent for the month, yeah. what, they're, what they're earning for the month. So. Yeah, nice. Pretty handy. Yeah, I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it too much. That's that. That's good. And then, so from from an advice kind of preparation, power planning perspective, mm. how you how you managing that in your business is that part that's done offshore? You mentioned before. Yeah. So we've got a, I've got a um, VA that's yeah offshore. She um, works full time. So pretty much from our meetings, it's a, a, a voice recording file note with our templated meeting notes sent to her. Part of that voice recording is a task list that I give her to do. She does all the research, produces the ROAs and the SOAs, and then passes it to our um, client service manager that prepares all the documents, and I check the documents before we're sending them out. Um, so, yes, she does a fair fair bit of the heavy lifting. And is yeah. it, are you using – some people use like drag and dictate and things for those voice notes. Like how, how are you recording the voice message? What, what are you doing? It's just a voice recorder app. It just records your voice only and you send that to the admin power planner. Easy. And we've got a template structure of all the meeting notes, the type of meeting, and you're obviously just reading off the heading and then obviously what else part of the meeting note and they're just putting it all in, sending it to me and saving it to our client file at the same time. Um, and that's pretty much done. So at meeting notes for me take probably three to – Seven or eight minutes. That's incredible. Good yeah. job. Getting some tips from you for what things that we can do here. <laughs> uh, we, before we pressed record, you we, we were having you were having a bit show. We're having a bit of a chat about MDRT, and so you mentioned the um, you've got your quarterly you know advisors getting together as part of your as part of your lost C, uh, but then you've also you know part of MDRT, and you spoke highly of one of the conferences that that are on. Can you? Can you talk about MDRT a bit in, in your involvement and, and how that's helping you? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a great great thing to talk about. Um, yeah, I've been a part of MDRT for the last two years now. So where that study group came from, our our quarterly catch up came from was from another advisor in Sydney. He's been part of MDRT going on forty years next year. Oh wow! He's seventy. I wouldn't say his age is seventy five or something something like that. Um, his name's Godfrey um, Phillips. Um, I think it's Phil, yeah, Godfrey's name is from Sydney. I, I don't know if I've stuffed up his last name, but yeah, he's been an, a part of MDRT for a long time. He's an old um, insurance advisor. Yeah. And MDRT was created based on pretty much um, the million dollar round table of like, I think it was like 27 advisors that um, came together and they're all like, we want to join a, create a group where we can share information together to help each other in business. So from that pretty much group, 
it's grown into this global organization where there's like 90,000 members. Um, in Australia, there isn't a lot of members now um, because a lot of the old insurance advisors were part of that group and a lot of them have left the industry. But at the same time, now it's become more of, it's, it's more about just sharing information with, with each other. So that group that we catch up quarterly from, stemmed from that. Like that was part of the part of the reasons why I started the group because we were sitting down at a Christmas um, function one year for Spark and we all were sitting around the table talking about our business, my business, what are you doing this, how are you doing that. And then I took the initiative from, from Godfrey and said, why don't we just start this on a quarterly thing? I took the initiative of actually starting it and taking everyone down. And so I'm pretty much like the the chairperson for it. Really. I, <laughs> I'm the person that spends the time organizing each group, each session, where, where we're going to, who we're talking to, who's coming to the session. So um, the advisors in our group are just pretty much saying, yes, we want to come or we don't want to come. I'm organizing the whole day, which yeah, takes yeah. probably half a day for me to organize, which I'm happy to give away because I'm happy to – I like going to those sessions. It's good to be around other advisors, speak to other advisors. So, yeah, the MDRT has two conferences every year or actually three, two conferences. So the main conference is in um, America every year. Uh, they have between sort of like – Ten to fifteen thousand advisors that go to it, um, and then there's Huge. one in the Asia Pacific. The most recent one was in Singapore. Yeah, okay. Um, the one in Singapore, yeah, had about seven or eight thousand advisors. And there's a lot of advisors, a lot of um, advisors through the Asia Pacific region, like the Philippines and stuff like that. That just are brokers for one company. Um, but the same thing. There's a there's a there's a format, and it's a very well run organization so if you go into like a licensee pd day or a conference usually what you get bombarded with is product you're sick of going there because there's a fund manager here product provider here use my product use this product use that product another one it's really about well you're the advisor how do you become a better advisor and that whole conference is about motivation to become better advisors motivation you as a business owner um, top, teaching you about marketing and different techniques and stuff like that, um, but teaching you about life as well. They have like this whole concept, whole concept mantra thing with this uh, whole concept uh, thing, yep. where it's talking about not only just you personally, um, but it's talking about you financially, spiritually, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a, but the good thing about the whole group is you're going away to an international conference or the one that I went to two years ago was in Australia for luckily for me. Yeah. Um, so I was pretty wowed by the whole whole session. It was like very motivating. Coming out of it, you feel very motivated to go and implement things that you've learned through that whole three or four days into your business. And that's the, that's the key. I've noticed that you come away from all the MDRT groups and the conversations that you go to that you're actually, big thing is you're coming away with little gold nuggets yeah. of information and it's what you do with that information that really makes an impact to your business. You can always go and listen to it, but if you're not going to actually make a change to actually go and implement one or two little things that will make yourself better and your business better and your advice better for clients. So. Um, it's more of a professional development thing. And you reckon and you're, and you're, you're, you sound really passionate about it. You've, you're, you've come back and, and made some changes and, and you know, oh, yeah. so big or small. For, yeah, for, the, for an example, like um, one of the small things was a business card, Aaron Kane down in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, he had this Vice business card that's like a tap card that saves all your information for a client straight away for a business card. That was one of the things I took away from it. Yeah, okay. That was just one thing. Yeah. The other thing was about um, teaching you to, to do things that you're good at and what you're valuable at doing and pass on all of the other things that you don't like doing to someone that can actually do them for yeah. you. And if it takes you, um, if it means that you need to sacrifice some of the, the short-term like short-term cash flow and stuff like that. Profitability, yeah. 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 Um, to actually go and actually pass on that to someone else, it makes you work harder to go and go to that next level. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? So that's what I took away. I took away that at the start. I, I hired um, a client service manager 
straight away after that. I was like, I had a fair bit of work coming through and I was trying to juggle all these different hats and it really just made me, uh, I've actually got to go and do that. So that was one of my little yeah. gold nuggets that I took away um, and I implemented that straight away and that's made a world of difference yeah. to my business. What, what, and, what, what do you reckon the biggest challenge in your business is today? Um, I don't, know, I don't really have any challenges. Like it's always yeah. – now it's all about just bringing on your ideal client. Okay. Marketing to your ideal client and getting um, a reach to that ideal client. Is that, so, is that what this book's about that you mentioned before? That you, you, you know uh, no, the little book of wealth concepts that I've created is just pretty much like a tool to give to clients to say, this is who we are, this is what we do, and this is what we speak about, and these are the areas that we can help you in. And it's a tool for me to actually explain the concepts of advice. Oh, yeah, great. So it has everything from cash flow, bucketing strategies, um, has a lot about insurance in there, about the needs and the, what, how, what you need insurance-wise. Um, it's got a great table to show you life stages, what the life stages that you need for insurance, talks about the different types of insurance. Um, it also talks about investments. A big thing that I use it for is the investment side of things, the investment time frame of how long you're going to be invested for um, and also the asset classes. A lot of people don't know what asset classes are. They yeah. just say, oh, my super is with Australian super. It does this. <laughs> my super just does that. I'm like, actually, no, it's not what Australian super is doing. It's actually the investments inside the fund that make it run, how hard it's going to run and how fast it's going to run. So the asset class is, is just more about an education piece, helping them understand the asset classes, what does Australian shares mean, international shares, property, all that sort of stuff, how it means, and how do we make the breakup for your money and where it's important for you in your life stage. Um, and then also it talks about superannuation and retirement planning and a bit of estate planning. That's our sort of like a little contact. Yeah. And so when when do you give that to clients? How do you, how does it? Yeah, we give it to every client, every meeting. It's like our FSG, um, and I take it with me to clients. So usually when I'm having a first meeting with a client in person, I'll take it with me to the meeting yep. and use it during the meeting because I'm actually explaining the concepts of the areas of advice at the time I'm giving it to them. So it's a tool for me as an advisor to help educate clients. Really, so that's. And I created that right at the start of when I started business because when you start business, you don't have all that many clients. Yeah, to to. yeah, yeah. And I was like, what am I going to do to actually really give to someone that's a bit more tang tangible that they actually can look through and read? And now I've gotten to the point where we actually catch up with with corporates and businesses where we're having like group um, sessions with their employees. Mm. And non laminating it as a, a wellness program yeah. for their staff to show them that their employers actually do want to look after them. And we're giving out this book to go and give that give something to them. It obviously costs me something to print. And it's like a little handbook that you yeah. use. So yeah. um it's nice to give something away. I always like giving something yeah, away. It's good. You're kinda of leaving you're leaving something with your name and your logo and, and so forth on yeah, it. Yeah. And exactly it, right. you know, this you, it, you, you mentioned about hiring and you're different, making different improvements. I've, I've heard different people along the, along over the years say if there's something in your business that you're repeating all the time, like document it in some way so that you're not having to repeat yourself all the time. So, you, you know, yeah. you, you've done it in the form of a book by the sound of things and yeah. you're referencing different parts of that book when you're explaining other people talk about, you know, record a video of how you explain your investment philosophy or whatever and have clients watch the video rather than repeat it over and over and over, particularly if you're in a small business on your own, there's only so much time that, you, that you've got to do things. If you can save a bit there, then and it's yeah, helpful. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's more about a tool. Giving yeah. You become, I think I've both learned early on as an advisor that you're an educator first and then you're an advisor second. Like always use your educator hat first to educate people because a lot of people don't know what superannuation, personal True. finances mean. So help educate them first and then – Give them guidance what you they should be doing, and then help them make a decision on what they need to do, mm. rather than saying, "I'm the advisor. This is what you have to do." Yeah, listen to me. <laughs> I'm smarter than you. You listen to me. It's yeah. not like that. It's like I'm building a relationship with you. I want to help you through your journey, 
But you need to know what things mean and how they interact with different things and educating them on their different parts of that yeah. is, I think, is really important. So what's the, what's the biggest opportunity, do you think, for you in your business? Um, I think the biggest opportunity, I don't know, there's a number of things at the moment they're working on. We're working on another book for retirees. Um, I think that'll be a big, uh, big opportunity for us for a, a heavy lead referral yeah. uh, thing. So. Um, the biggest opportunity, I don't know, really. Um, yeah, I've, we're re- redoing our our um, at the moment. We're redoing how we interact with clients in our pipeline management. Yeah, okay. Um, and what we want to do there is that every every part of the stage of our advice process is that we want to be in contact with clients to communicate with them where they're at, what they're doing, what we're doing, and what part of the stage they're up to. So I find that when you speak to a client for the first time and you have a presentation meeting, in between we have a strategy discussion meeting for half an hour as well of what we've found and what we're actually going to give advice on and what they're comfortable with because that's pretty much like a pre-presentation meeting. You're confirming everything before you have the presentation meeting and then you're not going into that presentation meeting blind. Yeah. So, but what we're doing is part of our process, especially with the non-boarding process, when we're getting a new lead, we're actually allowing them to book the meetings for themselves, having a discovery meeting and then getting that data capture, which is a wealth portal, all within a quick process of moving a, a toll along. Yep. And then there's automated text messages and emails going out to clients to systemize that process. What's that, what's that automation built on? Um, it's built just through a system really, like yeah. a, a CRM pipeline system. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so you can create the automation through your business and how you want it to look and what you want it to say. So as part of our each part of our process, we're actually sending out and communicating with clients in that manner or as an automated process. It's fantastic. So, yeah, so once you've signed a client or you're following up a client, it sends out an automated message as soon as you move it from one toll to the next toll. Um, and then as part of the research process, you don't really re- hear much from clients. So we do like a text message for when we're actually sending out the authorities to their super accounts to let them know and letting them know once we've completed the research, we're going to have a strategy discussion meeting once we've com- done all the research for the super and pensions or their insurance cover. And we have a quick 20 or 30 minute strategy discussion. This is your fun. This is what we've found. This is the what the lead advice looks like. Are you happy with that? Um, without telling what the product is, and then going through that process, so it's an easier meeting when we go into the implementation meeting. But as we move through that process, once the power plan has completed the advice document, it sends an automatic test message to them: "We've completed your advice document. Book in your presentation meeting with your advisor." And then it moves on to our next stage of implementation, um, and it's got automated systems for our internal staff to tell them what to do, where to look for. And then as we've completed or as we're implementing the plan, it sends out another message. We're implementing your plan now. If you've got any questions, give us a call. But the system integrates both text message, emails, Facebook, Instagram, all onto the one system and you can reply to them in that one system. What's it what's it called? What system are you using? If I told you James would have to kill me on that. <laughs> no, it's called um, go by level. What is it? What is it? Go high level. Go high level. That's a that sounds amazing because yeah, you know, like there's so many parts in there that yeah, we're contacting the client, say, oh, we, that, your advice is ready. Can we book in a meeting with you? It's a you know, phone yeah. Or something. So then yeah, that's, and then we're doing that for our review process as well. Yeah. Sending out um, a message to them 45 days from the pretty much the anniversary date to book in that looking back meeting. Yeah. And then our looking forward meeting is post our anniversary date to obviously sign off on. Our next twelve months of advice. Been, yeah, uh, yeah, we've been uh, doing That's a fair fantastic. bit of work um, in between trying to learn our business and how I like to operate is a big thing. But um, I think we're getting to a sweet spot where we're now being able to use this system for the last pretty much two or three weeks, and it's just giving us a good visual overlay of where we're at with things, what we're doing, who's doing it, what what stage, and. And then the the interesting is now we're going on this um, next phase of like social media and marketing yeah. phase. Um, it's got social media planner through the whole thing. So you can create a social media post in the system with in the calendar and link 
Instagram, Facebook, and Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn all into the one post, and it links it all together automatically for you. Yeah. And then you can schedule it for the coming month, really. Schedule it all. And then it's got an AI integration where if you want to um, create content and what you want to talk about, it's hard for you to come up with it on your own. It'll tell you what to do. AI just pretty much clicks a button and it creates a, creates a little spiel for you. That's fantastic. I'm going to go and have a look at that. That's a, yeah. that's the best. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's the thing about moving out in business on your own. Yeah. Uh, it's challenging at the same time. You get to do things differently to how you've previously done it before. Yeah. Businesses use their system for a big business and overlay and overlook, whereas small businesses like you want to create a system where you've got support around you to go and give good and simple and accurate advice to your clients and communicating with them. I've noticed where a few other advisors where they get their virtual assistants to actually give them an update where they're at. Yeah. Whereas like- I'm going to take that from that and use a system where it just gives a little email or text message every time we're moving it through the process, letting them know it's not stuck in stagnant land. Hmm. Something is actually happening. And as you move it from toll to toll, it shows you what's going on, how Brilliant. it's going. I think so. Brilliant. But yeah, we um a lot of my clients were they're all out in the country areas. So I'm originally from the country at the back of Burke. So yeah. yeah. I like to get out there and meet with the country people. So we do a lot of trips out to Bathurst and Dubbo and Burke and stuff like that because country people get country people. <laughs> so, so you're doing a few Ks in the car then? Yeah, so I clocked up a fair few Ks, but um, we sort of have a day where we're actually going out and seeing people um, all in one day or two days. So, um, But it's not to say we've got a number of executives in Sydney's um, that we look, I look after as I, well. So. I, I love the, I love the meshing that you've put that you're putting into place. Of you know, you've just been talking about using this, this system where it's using AI and automation and all the rest of it to to really speed up all of that. But at the same time, you're jumping in the car, you're driving to Burke, and you're going to have a cup of tea with someone for their uh, for their meeting. It's uh, it's a great meshing of both kind of the old and the new worlds together for for the way that you want to do business. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's yeah. good. Um, we're in a good spot. We enjoy what we do. So uh, yeah. I figured we're, we're going to be in it for the next 30 years. So why not um, have a good crack at it and yeah. uh, try and make it as simple and easy for you to do business and obviously create a decent business out of it. Yeah. So fantastic. we're well on our way to that now, I think, think James. So Good on you. Look, thanks for joining me this morning, Lionel. This has been fantastic. Um, I've got a, a few. I'm going to listen back to this episode myself, and and <laughs> there's a few nuggets that you've had in there. I'm sure there is for anyone that's that's been listening. Thanks for your time, and uh, thanks for sharing so much with us today. No worries, James. Thanks for having me on. 